Good evening, Lauronauts. My name is Jim, and I'm here to talk to you about Meshtastic. So this is the second video I've done. Uh, the first video I did was uh, covering my personal achievement of managed to, managing to broadcast over 103 kilometers with my uh, Heltec V3. Uh, since that video, uh, a lot of you have asked questions uh, along the lines of how did I do that? And could I do a video or could I um, share uh, hints, tips and tricks of how I did that? So that's the aim of this video, and that's exactly what I'm going to do this evening. Um, first and foremost, it's not just a case of buying an aerial, uh, sticking it on, and then just it works. Okay. So the the this device here that I actually used to uh, achieve that distance with struggles to communicate to another device that's just down the bottom of the garden. Uh, the reason for that is because I'm currently in a cellar. I'm underground, um, and radio waves don't like travelling through. Uh, buildings, especially with buildings that have electric cables in them or pipes or anything that basically blocks that that radio frequency. So with that in mind, we need to think about the environment that we're broadcasting from. So for example, the 103.3 kilometres that I managed to achieve last Sunday uh, was from the top of the Clee Hills near me. Now that's, uh, that's, that's a really high Obviously, it's a hill, isn't it? So I've, I've got a great line of sight down to other nodes. And it just so happened that I managed to have line of sight down to Bristol from the top of the Clee Hills. And because there was a node down there, we connected. So what is line of sight? OK, so if we imagine the antenna that's on top of our device, imagine that's a, a bedside lamp, like a light bulb. OK, and that's going to shine light in a ball, isn't it? So Imagine now we're in a dark room with a wardrobe in the center. And if we're over by the door and we turn that light on, the light's gonna light up the whole room, except behind the wardrobe. The space that's behind the wardrobe is being blocked by the wardrobe, so the light doesn't penetrate it. Well, that's very similar to RF waves when they're traveling through the environment. So when I was at the top of the Clee Hill, I managed to broadcast all the way down to Bristol because there were no obstructions in my way. Now that was a distance, as you know, of 103.3 kilometers. Now I've got a friend who lives in Kidderminster, which line of sight is about 12 kilometers from me. However, there are multiple things like the wire forest, for example, is in the way. And Kidderminster being quite lower than, than where I live, there are a, a number of factors in the way, buildings, pylons, the terrain itself. So unfortunately, my friend that lives in Kidderminster, we've, we've never been able to connect because of, of the terrain that's in the way and the line of sight, the radio waves simply can't get down there. So to just think that bolting an aerial on, a, on your device, then all of a sudden you've got this fantastic range isn't necessarily always the case. Now that that's out of the way, uh, we can talk about other things like uh, upgrading our equipment. So um, the antenna that I've used on mine, I'll put the link in the description below so um, that the people who have asked me for it can go and buy it. But this antenna here, we need to think about the placement of that relative to, uh, to our electronic equipment. So similarly to not wanting to put um, our antenna next to other electronic equipment, which will hamper its ability to be able to actually broadcast. We also need to think about uh, the equipment that ourselves that we're using. So for example, your Heltec V3 board, in this case, that's what I'm using. You wouldn't want to just wrap the antenna lead around it and stick the aerial right next to it because that might create a shadow that would stop the line of sight from uh, from the, from the area itself. So what we can do is uh, we create a case. So for example, um, Chris Ridley, I believe his name is, has made a really nice case called the Bender. That's perfect, great, ideal starter case. It, it, has a facility to keep your board nice and secure. It takes the antenna a sensible distance away from any electronics and, and the battery itself. And of course, the antenna is mounted on top of the uh, uh, of, of the, the actual case itself. I know there's a side option as well, which is just as good, but um, having it on the top is probably the most optimum because then, let's say, for example, you put it on the top of the roof of your car, the highest part of that equipment is your antenna. So that's another great way to go is definitely get a case. So there's another couple of things that we can do. Um, now what I'll do is I'll just draw your attention to my computer and we'll go through some uh, settings that I've changed and uh, some explanations for that. So all I want to do here is uh, once we've connected to our device is um, if we go over to where it says configuration or config here 
go into our device and we can uh, scroll down and you'll just see the, here that I've put my node info broadcast interval at 300. Um, I think the original one's something like 10,000 or something. I've dropped mine right down so it's basically constantly broadcasting the fact that it's here or trying to get out onto the, to the net and just sort of um, make everyone else aware that it's working. Um, another thing I've done is if we go into... Um, LoRa is uh, I've upped my hop limit to five. Now the latest firmware, which is 2.2.21, actually comes with this set as standard, whereas prior firmwares I think it's set to three, maybe four. But um, even though this particular firmware is still on the earlier version, I've upped it till five anyway, just because I want to be able to increase my chances of being able to get out. Um, other than that. Everything is pretty much standard there. Uh, one last thing that we can do is if we go into module configuration and scroll across to telemetry, uh, just double check these numbers here aren't silly. Um, I think these are just standard numbers really. Um, other than that, that's pretty well it. So the main uh, points that I want to get across here is that it isn't all about the equipment. It is also about the environment that you're operating that equipment in. Um, as I mentioned earlier, I've got a fairly decent aerial. Uh, we've all seen the uh, capability it's got. However, it doesn't work in the cellar 50 yards down the garden. You know, um, like I said, environmental factors are a big thing. Uh, okay, so uh, that's it really, I think, for me for this video. Um, if you do have any further questions or comments, uh, stick them below. I'll try my best to um, answer those for you. I'll put the link for the antenna I've been using in the video description. So um, if I'm not affiliated to that or anything. It's just, just a link off AliExpress. I'll stick that in there. And then um, if you fancy getting it, get it. Let me know how you get on with it. Other than that, uh, this weekend, I'm up the Malvern Hills, 435 metres above sea level to see if I can get even further south. I'd love to meet those guys on the south coast on Saturday morning um, over, the, over the mesh. Uh, we'll see how we get on. Uh, if I get the video out in time on Sunday, I'll see you Sunday. Have a great week.